Number one asks us which statement is true about these two distributions, and it's gonna be talking about the mean and the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is kind of how wide or how spread apart the dots are. And then the mean is where like the middle of the data is, and mean is where you add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. Um, so when you have like clusters of numbers like this, the mean is gonna be somewhere kind of close to these kind of peaks. And so if we're looking at this, the mean is kind of somewhere in here, I would say. And for this one, the mean is maybe somewhere in here. So since most of the dots are further to the left or to the right here, this is gonna be a higher mean. And most of them here are to the left. So then that's gonna be a lower mean. And then the dots are pretty much the same um, kind of width away from each other in each of these sets. So I would say the standard deviation seems to be about the same. So part A says the mean of set A is less than the mean of set B, which is what we talked about. A has a lower mean, B has a higher mean, and then their standard deviations are the same. So I would say A is gonna be the true one. And you can read through the others that to see that they're incorrect. So B says the mean in set A is greater, so that's wrong. C says the standard deviation in A is less, but they're um, similarly spaced, so that's not true. And then D talks about the mean um, in A being great, or sorry, the standard deviation being greater. So A. Number two, my collects information about 37 classmates. She believes her data set is perfectly symmetrical with a mean with a mean and a median of 20. She then realizes that the number she has recorded as 32 was actually 42. So what's true about the mean and median of her corrected set of data? So what we want to look at here is that this number, okay, from 32 to 42, it's above the median in her data. Okay, so like all of her data is here, if I just do some dots, and here's the middle of it, so the median. So now this point 32 that she had recorded, she's saying is actually incorrect, whoops, and it is um, actually 42. So let me get this, so then this is gonna move up here. Now, um, that's not gonna change our median because median is the number of data points up here. And then the number of data points down here and then 20 is right in the middle. So moving this 32 within this top set doesn't change the median. If it had been lower or higher and it moved to the other side, it would. So our median is gonna stay the same. Um, but the mean, is gonna change because we went up 10 numbers when we start adding and dividing. So um, the, let's find where it says that. So the mean and median are both still 20, no. The mean of the corrected data set is still 20, no. The average is gonna go up. The median is still 20, yes, but the mean is greater, yes, because the mean is gonna pull it up higher now that we have a higher data point, so C. Number three, select all distributions which are approximately symmetric. So that look um, pretty symmetric on both sides. Um, so not exactly, but approximately symmetric. So set A looks pretty symmetric, okay? It looks like it's got this kind of middle here. The data's about similar, a little bit different, but pretty similar. Same with set B. Same with um, set C, pretty symmetric right around here, looks about the same on each side. D, certainly not. D is skewed, okay? So D has a lot of stuff on this side and nothing really over here. Set E is really skewed this way, um, or has a lot of data this way. And then set F looks pretty symmetrical. So again, not like going up in the middle, but um, equal kind of on either side of maybe a middle point. Number four, in an experimental study, it was noticed that people who eat more leafy green vegetables tend to get better sleep than the general population. 
Researchers wonder whether the improved sleep might be caused to the minerals potassium and magnesium found in leafy green vegetables. So how could the researcher design an experiment to determine the effects of potassium and magnesium on sleep? So they could randomly select a certain number of participants, then split um, the participants into two groups. One group um, could be given a like pill with um, potassium and magnesium, and the other group could be given a placebo pill that doesn't have that, but then they're not sure if they have it or don't have it. So the other group could be given a placebo pill. Then the sleep hours. So they're trying to decide improve sleep. So then the sleep, um, their sleep be recorded. So whether that's like asking them if they're sleeping better or recording how much more deep sleep they get through like a sleep watch or whatever, but recording their sleep after giving one group the magnesium potassium and one group not getting it. Number five, Elena is conducting an experiment to determine if high school students are more relaxed when the lights are off or when music is playing during an exam. She selects 10 of her friends to take the exam with the lights off and 10 of her friends to take the exam with music playing. What's problematic about the way that Elena selected her group. So she didn't um, randomly select high school students since she only selected her friends. Number six, an environmental education club has 318 members. Select all methods that would select a sample of 20 members at random from the entire environmental education club. So ask 20 members to volunteer. Volunteering is not random. Place the names of the 318 members on individual slips of paper in a bowl, thoroughly mix it up, and then select 20 of them. That is random. Number the members one through 318. Use a random number generator to get a list. That's random. Select 10 of the younger and 10 of the older members. That is not random. That has a system behind it. Send a survey to all 318 members and record the first 20 responses is not random.